we got here is my own personal my own personal mechanic here in Montana. Okay, now we're gonna, gonna be careful not to over grease this so we don't blow out any seals. We're gonna give her about four pumps. And we can tell this hub is in good shape because it turns freely and there's no play. It's under no clunk, clunk, clunk. We're looking under here and this doesn't have any shock. This is what you call one of them rubber torsion axles. So there's nothing loose or anything in there. So we know we're okay there. So we'll put this dust cap back on. Keep the dirt out. He's good for another Alaska ride on the axles. It's a Dexter axle, so it's an excellent axle, high end. High end axle for a trailer. Nothing but the best for Tennessee folks. <laughs> One thing about Tennessee is it's all about the quality. That's right. <laughs> now look at these new tires here. These tires can haul three of them gold wings, 170 miles an hour. <laughs> for a long time but we don't need that much looks like we lost these tires are a little taller look at that then your old one see that yeah as long as it clears the so it's it gonna so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and since the jack's on the other side we'll put the jack in to get enough clearance we'll put that one on first you want to polish these up all chrome and shiny before we put on no nah, we don't at least wipe them off then uh, somebody knows we've been here oh look at that one thing about Steve's Steve's Goldwing garage is he likes to polish stuff. <laughs> yeah. Even if you can't fix it, if you can clean it, people think you did something. If you're, if you're that picky about that, I hope you're that picky about your airplane too. Well, where you sit, you tell me. <laughs> I will do. <laughs> So see here, every year. And, and wait a minute, the best part was that your wife can't get through the gate. I keep not responding to that. <laughs> so every year at Oshkosh, there's a theme poster with Emulia, the cow from Wisconsin, that Aeroshell puts out every year. So this one here, this is for um, 2012. The theme was the 75th anniversary of the Piper Cub. There's Emulia flying a cub. This one here is 2013, and uh, you can see the bovine squad, and uh, that's for Oshkosh. She's got her flying cap on there. This one here is, uh, let's see what year is this one? I'm not sure. It's another one, fly above the rest. This one down here, this is a hundred years of flight, a uh, special poster from 03. See, there's Orville and Wilbur. Yeah. Uh, this one over here is from last year. This is my freshest one. I'm trying to get framed by most of them. Uh, Bovine Eagles Aerobatics 101. She's taking some flying lessons. This one here is from 2016. This was the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, honoring veterans on that one. Then I got a few other ones. This one here is a signed poster by um, by um, Sean Tucker. He's probably, you probably heard of him. He's probably the most famous, winningest air show performer, unlimited class that's ever been. He signed it there, so he said to Steve and Cindy, Sky Friends, Live with passion, Sean Tucker, 2013. Then I got all these hats because I volunteer when we go there. You get a volunteer hat over here. When you go to Oshkosh, you get little buttons. You get a little thing, Oshkosh by it, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> I like this one being in Montana. See, see where aviators roam. He's carrying a saddle in one hand and his headset in the other, and there's a beautiful 180 sitting there in the grass behind him. This one here is signed by Team Aeroshell, um, and uh, they wrote "Smoke On" and they all signed each pilot. The aerobatics team. Those are T6 Texans. They fly. What, what were you telling me about this plane? This is a Piper PA28R200 
which is known as the Arrow, and it's a very popular um, complex trainer. So they will uh, get a guy through his private and then they'll put him in this one and teach him how to fly a retractable a complex airplane. Um, so it has a Lycoming O200 that's fuel injected, 200 horse with a constant speed prop. So you change the pitch on the prop. So my friend owns this one and we fly in a lot. We've been to Phoenix in it and run down there and back, well down there in the day and back in the day. He's had a Tosh Tosh several times. Um, we rebuilt the motor and basically hold firewall forward. You can, we wanted to do something a little different. That's why we painted the motor mount red. It's normally black, but uh, it's a good little plane. It's good for about 100 and, 140 knots cruise, maybe. Um, this one here's mine. This is a 68 Cessna 182 M model. And I've got uh, bigger tires and it's got a 206, that's the 206 nose fork, a bigger nose fork, bigger wheel, so I can land in the pasture. It's been sitting here a long time. We'll have to see if we've got enough battery to start. I might need to throw the charger off in a few minutes. We'll just see. There you go, flow up there. We'll see if we're going to be okay on this. Yeah, we can always prop start. Huh? Always prop start. <laughs> Yeah, we can back in with it.
blood all over Reno's face. Reno then goes into a state of shock. He starts to shout contradictory orders. Mount, dismount, mount, dismount. Soldiers cannot move without the orders of their commanding officer. They have no idea what to do. Reno's orders do not make any sense. Reno loses over half of his three companies of men within 15 minutes before he finally regains his composure. Once Reno finally snaps out of it, he shouts out, any man who wants to live, follow me. Reno's skirmish line breaks and falls. They retreat and race towards the river. The standard army procedure back in those days is to retreat to the high ground so you can see the attack coming towards you. Reno and his few surviving soldiers have to race straight through the encampment to reach the river, and then they scramble into the hills here. This far sidewalk, this is where Reno and his men would have been laying on their stomachs, shooting down at the warriors coming up from the valley floor below them, all of a sudden, when all hope seems lost, Benteen pops up and comes back into play here. Benteen, who circles back to the swamp to receive orders from Custer. Custer was not there. Benteen picks up the pack train and the last company of soldiers. 
He begins to make his way down the valley floor when he hears all the gunfire coming from Reno's attack. Thinking that the battle is in these hills, Benjin races his men and his mules up here, but just as he reaches the top, he discovers Reno holding his defensive line. Benjin rides over to Reno and screams at him. Where the hell is Custer? Reno responds, I don't know, but for God's sake, I've lost over half my men. Stay here and help me. Reno and Benteen are then stuck out here for two days, pinned down, constantly fighting off warrior forces. Hence, this place is named the Reno Benteen Defense Site. After two days, the warriors finally decide to leave those men alone and let them live. But why did they do that? Again, referring back to General Terry's written orders to Custer not to attack this encampment unless there was provocation. Sitting Bull himself said years later after this battle was over, we left those soldiers on that hill alive because we wanted them to go back and tell the story that we were not the ones who attacked them first. They went down there and they shot into our teepees. From this point forward, we'll start following Custer's movements back to Last Stand Hill. We're now following this battle from start to finish, so let's make our way back to the bus. Yeah, boy. 
the good times, they bad not the good times, you bad.
do when it rains. You find a place to hide. What I've run into on Highway 40, that is pure ice from the sleep storm that hit me earlier. I mean, I ran into that. I thought, what is that? All of a sudden, I realized his eyes had to stop.
This one's lying down. Oh, he didn't like oh, it. He just did. 